Welcome to the St. Michael Daily Meditations for Lent. My name is Mary Lessman and I'll be leading our meditation today. Our theme this Lent is in the garden. When Jesus faced his deepest trial, he prayed in the garden. As we struggle with our own trials, Jesus walks with us and calls us to a deeper life of prayer and commitment to God's love. As Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. A reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. On that day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Here ends the reading. Last March, it was my great privilege to lead a group of pilgrims from St. Michael to the Holy Land. We had an amazing experience, and it's not lost on those of us who went that such a trip is not currently possible and may not be again for a very long time. It was amazing to see and walk upon the sites where Jesus was born and raised and carried out his ministry. One of my favorite days was the one we spent around the Sea of Galilee. We walked the Mount of the Beatitudes and shared Holy Eucharist. We had touristy St. Peter's fish for lunch. We toured Capernaum, seeing Peter's home and the nearby sites of some of Jesus' miracles. We capped off our day with a late afternoon boat ride on the Sea of Galilee. It was all sunshine as we pulled away from shore, but about 20 minutes in, when we were in the middle of the lake, A rainstorm arose, seemingly out of nowhere. We huddled under the boat's roof and put on our rain jackets. Ten minutes later, the storm was gone as quickly as it had risen. In the past, I would read stories like the one today from Mark and think, really? Would the storm simply rise out of nowhere? Wouldn't they have noticed threatening clouds? Wouldn't the waves have begun to get choppy? But now I've experienced for myself the notoriously tempestuous weather on the Sea of Galilee that can change in a moment. The disciples are caught in this same rapid change in weather to the point of danger. The boat is being swamped and they become more and more fearful. They cannot believe that Jesus sleeps on. So they wake him, challenging him with, do you not care that we are perishing? Jesus, taking in the scene, rebukes the wind and sea. Peace, be still, he commands. And the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. We understand the disciples' fear. We too are assailed by the wind and waves that rock our fragile vessels. We fear failure, disapproval, rejection, meaninglessness, diminishment, illness. And of course, we fear death our own death, and the death of those we love. This story is such an apt metaphor for our own lives, for the perils that we traverse and the profound vulnerability of the craft that bears us on our way. This is not a dig deep within yourself and find courage in the face of challenge lesson. Rather, it's a reminder that we can rest in the Lord of wind and wave the one we trust to be more powerful than both Galilean storms and the storms that rage in our own lives. Note that even though he challenges the depth of their faith, Jesus doesn't tell the disciples there's nothing to be afraid of. The truth is, fearsome things are very real. We know them in our lives and in the lives of those we love, and we see them in the state of our world. As we grow in faith, we come to understand that even though fearsome things are very real, they do not have the last word. They do not have ultimate power over us, 
because reigning over the world of fearsome things is a God who is mightier than they. God and his messengers tell us time and time again, do not be afraid. Not because there are no storms or fierce winds or waves, but because God is with us. We are held by the one who created us out of his overflowing love, and he will not let us go. In this story, we are shown that Jesus has authority and command over the created order. He can take the chaotic waters of our life and wrestle peace and blessing out of them. Even though there are real and fearsome things in our lives, they need not paralyze us. They need not have dominion over us. They need not own us. Because we are not alone in the boat. Amen. Please join me as we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.